clashes today between border police and Israeli residents when officers arrived to evacuate the illegal outpost of Vaira Shachar. Much of the tiny outpost was evacuated. The move was backed by Finance Minister Bezalel Smotrich after it was determined that the site was privately owned by Arab land. More from ILTV's William Sharon. A large force of border police and IDF civil administration personnel today entered the unauthorized Benjamin outpost and destroyed many of the structures. There were clashes and arrests reported at the site between residents and security forces. Settlers burned tires and scattered spikes on the road to try to stop the effort. Officials from the civil administration backed by police destroyed or evacuated five buildings in Aira Shachal outposts near the settlement of Kohav HaShachal. The order to evacuate and destroy the outposts were approved by Finance Minister Betalel Smotrich, despite his pro-settlement stance and advocacy for the legalization of outposts. In this case, it was determined that the land on Aira Shaha was built was definitely private Palestinian land, and legalizing the site was not an option. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, and top military leaders met yesterday for an emergency assessment of army readiness. And LTV Steve Leibovich has more. The IDF and security heads reportedly warned Prime Minister Netanyahu that the army is feeling the impact of divisions in society over judicial reform and that things could get much worse in two weeks' time if Israel faces a constitutional crisis. Some 10,000 reservists who serve in the IDF voluntarily said they would no longer do so last month after the coalition advanced legislation related to judicial reform and some reservists are acting on their threats. The military leaders also reportedly told Netanyahu that IDF readiness would worsen if the Knesset passes a basic law that would expand draft exemptions for yeshiva students. Netanyahu reportedly answered that he was trying to reach compromises on controversial legislation and met afterward with Justice Minister Yariv Levin and Shas party head Arya Deri on the matter. Netanyahu also reportedly told the generals that there was little point in slowing down a compromise for talks with the opposition. After the meeting, the Prime Minister's Bureau released a statement saying that Netanyahu ordered idea fitness and preparedness be maintained in times of routine and emergencies and for any challenge. On Friday, Netanyahu reportedly had a heated phone conversation with IDF chiefs in which he said, it looks like the army is running the country. This after security heads spoke publicly about damage to the country's defenses caused by reservists suspending volunteer duty to protest government policy. Experience the power of truth with ILTV News. If you're looking for quality content and captivating visuals, join our news community and become an integral part of our team as we embark on a mission to unveil the real Israel, dismantling the web of lies and misinformation that surround reporting on Israel. By subscribing to ILTV News, you will not only have access to the latest updates, but you will also amplify our message, creating a ripple effect that carries the truth far and wide. Subscribe today and help reshape the narrative, available on the web, Android, and Apple. And joining us now to shed more light about both previous security updates is Colonel in the Reserves, Professor Gabi Siboni. Gabi, let's start with the meeting between the Prime Minister, the Defense Minister, and the Security Chiefs. Are the Army Chiefs doing the right thing by calling attention to potential problems in Army readiness? Well, uh, they, they are doing the right thing of, uh, you know, uh, putting light on what is their concern. However, they are not doing their job in to make sure that uh, uh, to make sure that uh, um, these problems are, are solved within the, the, the IDF, they should not uh, shift the problem to the to the um, uh, to the prime minister or to the defense minister. They should solve the problems, which they are not doing. They are just reflecting the problems, and that's what we see. They affect the problems and um, and they escalate as if they, they um, release themselves from responsibility of what has happened. They are fully responsible for what is happening, and they have to uh, manage this uh, crisis. And uh, to my best uh, understanding, they manage it very poorly. Could you go a little more in-depth about what was talked about, I mean, in this meeting between, these, between the group? I don't know in, in depth what was talked about. I only know what was published. and. Uh, um, uh, I assume that uh, 
that what was published is just uh, something to to satisfy whatever the public. However, I I, I think that um, um, it should be very. Um, I hope it was very um, implicit and uh, explicit. Sorry, uh, to the IDF commanders that the Israel government is expecting them to manage and to deal with these problems which they have not been dealing with for the last uh, three or five months. Uh, and uh, this is the main issue to my best understanding. Gabi, if true as reported, is the prime minister correct when he says that it looks like the army is running the country? Well, um, I think he's, he's correct, uh, because the, uh, if the army does not deal with this issue and let Let's uh, a group of uh, reservists, whoever they may be, uh, to uh, to uh, try to force um, uh, legislation or to to uh, make that uh, the legislation that they don't like will not be accepted. This is not acceptable completely. This should not be happening in any democracy, and it is a very very. Uh, bad, uh, bad conduct, and uh, we should not accept it in any in any case. I personally think that uh, uh, the readiness of the IDF has not been uh, affected completely. But this uh, discourse that uh, the army, the commanders of the army, have with the reservists is something that is not done. And I think that they have to deal with those uh, reservists in a, in the most um, severe way which has not been done. And this is uh, to my great sorrow. On one hand, you're saying that it's not affected. On the other hand, I mean, if they'll continue not coming to training, I mean, for the long run, you know, how, how good can it look, actually? Uh, well, uh, first of all, I think uh, the IDF uh, reserve you, uh, is, is much more than those 10,000, whoever they may be. The IDF uh, is, is much more than, uh, than the, the, those pilots or those uh, special units or whatever. Uh, I think Israel can manage, and, and I would say that I would argue that uh, um, a surrender to those uh, kind of threats is much worse than uh, being um, in a position where our readiness is uh, reduced or we cannot complete, you know, we, we cannot uh, conduct uh, uh, our missions in, in, a, in, a top, uh, in a top way or a 100% way. The surrender to these groups is a catastrophe. So we should never surrender to these groups. And uh, whatever the cost may be, whatever the cost may be, we should not surrender to these groups. And to my best understanding, it is uh, um, uh, the, 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 let's say, the, the main uh, readiness and, uh, and the ability of the IVF uh, has not been affected and will not be affected. Gabi, and back to our opening story about the removal of an illegal outpost in Benjamin. The IDF and civil administration moved in to remove the outpost. There seems to be disagreement about the decision within the army. Who made that call and why? As I understand, it was uh, um, under the approval of uh, the ministry, the minister in the, the, the defense ministry, Vesalius Smotrich. Uh, so I, I have read in, in the news. And in any way, the, the IDF is uh, the sovereign in this area and has to and have to uh, you know enforce its sovereignty and make sure that uh, illegal activity is not uh, maintained. However, I would expect that uh, illegal activity from both sides is, is uh, dealt with the same uh, assertiveness and uh, severe uh, activity. So uh, um, I think that uh, if they have decided this post is sitting on private land and cannot be legalized, no, it's, uh, there is no other way. And, uh, and uh, I, I can only be sorry that uh, they could not get in terms with the, the residents and to just to, to get into an agreement with them to, to evacuate them in willingly. But uh, uh, having that uh, it has failed this uh, issue, I, I would accept that they tried. Uh, has, it, has it failed? I'm, I'm, uh, there is no other way than evacuate. Gabi, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Amit.